So at some point in all of our lives, we have been told to cook chicken until 165 degrees internal. Today, I set out on a cooking quest to find out whether or not that is really true. So today, we're gonna cook four different chicken breasts to four different temperatures to find out which way is best. There is no time to waste, my friends. Now let's go. Okay, my friends, this test is gonna be quite simple. I have four equal-sized chicken breasts before me. I'm gonna pull one at the regular 165 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna pull one at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The third one, I'm I'm gonna pull at 155 and the fourth one, which probably definitely won't be done, I'm gonna pull at 150 just so we know. Simple as that. And since this is just an experimental kind of test, I'm just going with salt here. That's all I'm gonna put on the chicken, both sides. And I'm not a monster. I'm gonna sear these things off just so they have some nice flavor. A Little bit of neutral oil going down. This experiment is less about the technique and more to just see what happens with the temperatures. Drop our chicken. So I'll just sear for about two minutes until it's slightly golden brown. All right, so just a quick two minutes here on either side. Now it's time to probe them and just finish them in the oven so we can control the temperature really well. All right, so I got four probe thermometers here. I'm just gonna insert them into the thickest part of this chicken breast. And whenever probing, I think it can be wise to go in past where you wanna go and then pull back to the center. That is how I learned anyway. Dead center, pull back. Okay, here we go into the oven. Okay, I've got all my probes set up here. Again, I'm gonna do 165, 160, 155 and 150 right here. Look at that. One, 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 one. Pretty cool. Synchronicities. It's amazing how they're all climbing equally except for the bottom right one, which we're pulling at 150 because it was just a little bit thinner. Okay, our first chicken breast just hit 150 internal. Gotta mark it, otherwise I will forget. The next chicken breast just hit 155. Marking it. Here's our 160 breast. Ow. Marked. And finally, the standard 165, which is what we've been Hold to do. Now all I'm gonna do is let these rest down all the way to really see where they landed. And then we're gonna slice into each one starting from 165 down to 150. I'm really curious. Now do keep in mind here that this test was just about chicken breasts. And if we're talking about chicken thighs, chicken drumsticks, I recommend pulling those at 175 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is not a one size fits all approach. This is just for pan frying and baking chicken breast. All right, we're gonna start with the 165 and work our way down. And as a side note here for just cooking in general, right? We always cut meat against the grain and the grains on the chicken breasts are running like this. That way, but you always see people cut chicken breasts like this. But pro tip, you're slicing it this way, you're going against the grain making for a more tender bite. So I'm gonna slice the whole thing in half because I really wanna get a good judge of this. So there's the 165. It's got a nice little glisten to it. See that juice dripping down by my thumb there? Looks good. You know, this is what we've all been taught, right? Pull chicken at 165. Mm -hmm. It is tender, but also at the same time, a little dry in the mouth. I feel like the rest of these results are gonna be pretty shocking. Okay, here we go with the chicken breast I pulled at 160. Feels about the same to me. Let's go ahead and slice that again, right in half. <laughs> Surprising, completely, totally done. And this one does feel and look a little bit more tender to me. You can see that glistening going on. And just by feel, it just feels a little more tender to me. So we are heading in the right direction here. Okay, let's see how this one differs by mouthfeel. Feels more tender for sure. Mm -hmm. Noticeable difference. It just goes down a little bit easier. It's a little bit less dry in your mouth. You get a little bit less of that, you know that, you know that feeling when you have dry chicken. Hmm. Very interesting. All right, here we go with the 155. Now, if this thing is cooked through, we are really onto something here. Okay, going through, cooked through, cooked through. This one feels tender as well, but honestly, I don't notice a huge difference between this and the 155. Here we go. Okay, upon tasting it, didn't feel or look much different, but it feels to me in my mouth like it retained a little bit more moisture. Honestly, this one was pulled at 155. I'm shocked that it's completely cooked. What are we doing? What are we doing with 165? Oh my God, let's try the 150. This is crazy. Pulled at 150 degrees. Oh my God, what are we doing? What are we doing? Look at this one, pulled at 150 and it is, can you see that? It is absolutely glistening, glistening with moisture. Whoa, oh my gosh, I am shocked, my friends. You can just see with this one, I mean, just look. I'm like barely pulling and it just comes right apart. It's really freaking tender. The fact that the chicken breast I pulled at 150 degrees is completely cooked is blowing my mind, which means we definitely need to make a part two to this video where we pull them at even lower temperatures.
Oh, yeah. <laughs> By far, the best mouthfeel, the most tender chicken breast yet at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I am definitely gonna do a follow-up video to find out how low can we go to have a fully cooked chicken breast. This is crazy. Well, that certainly was an interesting one today, my friends. I definitely plan on making a follow-up video to test out those 145 and 140 temperatures. How low can we go? It's the limbo of chicken breast. And as always, please, if you got some value from this video, drop me a like, leave a comment if you so wish, and turn on notifications if you want to be a psycho, and we're all psychos here. And until next time, my sweet friends, you know I love you in the back!